welcome you guys to the webinar. I'm really excited to be with you guys tonight. My name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of Teamsy. Tonight, I'm going to show you guys how to get started right with Teamsy and become a power hour boss. Okay, so bear with me tonight. What we're going to do, make sure that's muted. We are going, I'm going to take you through the whole process of setting up Teamsy, right? It's pretty easy, but I'll take you through it anyways. I'll show you how to do it right. And then we're going to go through a power hour. I'll show you how to connect with people and start conversations. I'm going to demonstrate how you could connect with 20 people in 30 minutes. Okay. Then I'll show you how to follow up like a pro. So you can take them from starting a conversation to inviting, following up that invite all the way through to being a member of your team. I'll show you the whole process. We'll go through it pretty quick. It's going to feel like, um, sipping water from a fire hose because I'm going to give you a lot of information. Again, don't worry. We are recording the call so you can go back and reference it later. Make sure you have something to take notes on as well because I'm going to drop a lot of truth bombs on you that you guys are going to enjoy as we go. All right, cool. All right, let me just go ahead and jump over to my presentation here. Okay, let's just take you through this quick presentation then we'll dive into Teamsy. So get started right with Teamsy. Become a power hour boss. Okay. Just a little backstory on me for those of you guys who don't know me. Uh, my background is in business coaching and consulting. I've been teaching people how to build their business for the past 15 years. Okay. That's what I do. And a lot of the systems that Teams is built on are things that have been tried and tested with thousands, tens of thousands of, of clients over the years. Okay. What I want you guys to know, the reason I'm talking to you tonight is I kind of fell into network marketing. Um, probably like a lot of you guys, um, it became kind of a side gig just for fun. I, I found some products that I loved. You can see this is a post. I used to be a beach body coach, lost a bunch of weight and just really enjoyed network marketing. We thought it was an amazing business opportunity. Now, just to kind of share some of my story, when I started as somebody who coached businesses, I knew that if I was going to be successful in this much time a day that I needed to leverage that time. I needed to find a way to make that little bit of time I had be incredibly effective and efficient for me. And so I started looking for tools, you know, business tools that would help me do that. And um, that was the first thing because I knew I only had an hour a day at that time to work on the business. So I was looking for this. I wanted to find a system that allowed me to do these few things in just an hour a day, the most important things. I wanted a way to stay in touch with all of my contacts all of my contacts. See, the system that I, that I use and teach is called relationship marketing. It, it's built kind of on the idea that the people you know, the, the relationships you've built, your contacts is the most valuable thing you have. That circle of contacts that you've built is the most valuable thing you had. And I wanted to stay in touch with all of them. I also wanted to know when to contact them and when not to. The problem with, um, you know, reach outs and all that is that you spend so much time trying to figure out who to reach out to, right? All that planning. I mean, it's like you got an hour a day to do. You don't have that much time to plan. I wanted a system that would just give me the, my list for the day, okay? I also wanted to know what to say to them. I just wanted, I, I wanted to figure out, like, what are some things I can do to start conversations so that I'm not spending all day in analysis paralysis trying to figure out the perfect words. Does that make sense? So I wanted to just kind of, what can I say to them? I also wanted a way that I could follow up seamlessly so that people don't fall through the cracks. It's brutal when someone falls to the cracks. You guys know what I'm talking about. You're talking to somebody, they're excited. Uh, you think they're going to join the team. And then for whatever reason, they push back and say they're not ready right now. Right. And you're like, okay, no problem. And you back off a little bit. And then the next thing you know, they've signed up under somebody else. Has that happened to you yet? <laughs> Probably. Right. And the thing is, is that you didn't do anything wrong. Neither did they. They just fell through the cracks. I mean, you planted the seed with them, watered it, got them, nurtured them, but you just weren't there at harvest time. When they were ready, somebody else was there. They, you know, so you, I needed a system so that wouldn't happen to me. And there was one more thing that I was looking for in a system. It had to be something really easy to use. I'm really not that techie. People think I am because I'm the teensy guy. Honestly, you know, my engineers would giggle if they thought I, if they thought anyone thought I was techie. I've certainly learned a few things through this process, but it, it still has to be so easy for me. Well, you guys know where the story is going. Of course, I didn't find anything like that. There was nothing like that. In fact, there were very few systems even available for network marketing, and they were clunky, complicated, way overcomplicated, right? I mean, if you could figure it out, great, but how the heck are you going to duplicate that with your downline? So you guys know the story. We ended up building it. We built it. We built Teamsy because it didn't exist, and we needed it. All right, so there's a little background. Just to kind of give you guys, uh, catch you up on what's happened in the last two years, we've had more than 45,000 network marketers use Teamsy. I need to update that number, actually. We've also, um, 
wanted to give you kind of the results people are getting. Active users and teams have been averaging 21 new customers and nine new recruits over 90 days. 21 new customers and nine new recruits over 90 days. It's pretty awesome, right? Not bad. Imagine what that would be compounded over a year. All right. So let me jump out and show you Teamsy. We'll come back to that presentation at the end. I've got some action steps for you. Just wanted to give you a little background. Here we go. All right, so now you guys are looking at my Teamsy dashboard. Bear in mind, your Teamsy dashboard might look slightly different than this. That's because there's so many different versions of it, right? But they're all very similar. It's just the words, the, the nomenclature that, it, that is slightly different, okay? This version that I'm using is called Teamsy Standard. It's kind of the generic version. So if you are looking at a free trial of Teamsy or you're already in a free trial and, and we don't have a specific one for your network yet, this is the one you want to use. It works for everybody, okay? Now, let me just go back to that point. If you guys aren't already using Teamsy as a, as a subscriber or are on a free trial, you need to know you can get a free trial of Teamsy for 30 days. It's free. We don't ask for your credit card or anything weird like that. We just want you to use it for 30 days and really enjoy it, okay? Because we know that if you use it, you'll love it and want to keep it. Okay, so if you're not on a free trial already and you're just checking us out, go get on a free trial. You can do it right now at Teamsy.com, okay? So once you start your free trial, and you log in for the first time, it'll bring you into a setup wizard. The setup wizard is designed to make setting this up pretty easy, okay? And um, if you've already done that and dismissed it, you get the setup wizard back by going over here to settings in the top right and just launching it, setup wizard. Okay, so here's the setup wizard. I'll walk you through it real quick. It's pretty easy, guys. First thing is that you can subscribe to our messenger tips if you wanna get tips during your free trial on how to get the most out of it. It's a great way to do it, okay? And then in the, in the setup wizard, what we're gonna do are three things. We're gonna set our income goal, all right? So you're just gonna set an income goal. I'll show you how to do it in a second. Teamsy will then tell you what to do to hit it every day. Pretty cool. The second thing we'll do is we'll create a powerful why. And I'll lead you through the process of how to do it. So it's demystified. We're gonna get your why down so that you have a reason to persist and not quit. And then we'll get your contacts into Teamsy from everywhere, everywhere where you have contacts. We'll get them into Teamsy, one place. You can be super mega organized, all right? Okay, follow me, we'll go through this. So set your income goal, step one. Just put a number in here. When you first come in, it'll just be an empty box. I put 150,000 as my number, okay? This is the income level I'd like to be at 12 months from now. Okay, the income level I'd like to be at 12 months from now. I highly recommend that you stretch a little bit. If your goal is 20,000, kind of like stretch, get it to 80 right? Just stretch a little. You'll be surprised how efficient you can be with your time using Teamsy. Now, those of you guys who already have huge businesses and big teams, and you're already making multiple hundreds of thousands, what I want you to do for your goal is just set a goal for, you know, the new income you'll create this year, right? A great goal for you guys might be 150 or 100, okay? So just to kind of give you some context. All right, next, let's hit continue. And then what happens is, it's kind of cool, <clears throat> Teamsy now calculates about how many people I need to connect with over the next year to hit that goal, right? And so the number they're giving me is 4,348. It's a pretty good sized number, right? How many of you guys have connected with 4,348 people over the last year? Maybe not yet, but maybe now that you have Teamsy, you will. All right. Right now we've got um, a Teamsy bootcamp going with a few hundred leaders in the industry working together on a bootcamp, and they're averaging well over 100 a week which is gonna put them in that ballpark. Pretty cool, right? All right, um, so let's see. How do you do 4,348 connects? If you need an eat an elephant, how do you do it? You guys know this one? One bite at a time, right? So the next page breaks it down for us. First, it breaks it into three groups, prospects, customers, and distributors. And then it breaks it down monthly, weekly, daily. So that huge number, 4,348, is now an easy number. It's connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors on my team. So that's 19 people. I'm gonna connect with 19 people a day. Now, when I say connect, that's all I mean. I don't mean cold invite, recruit, try to sell. I mean connect. I'm just gonna get in the make someone's day mindset. My goal is to get them to smile and make their day and hopefully start a conversation, right? Because with relationship marketing, we invest in the relationship first. The people are more important than the sale. And when we keep our focus there, we generate a lot more business. We generate a lot more business and it's way more rewarding to come from a place like that. 
Okay, so you can see I've got two other boxes here, invites and ads. Invites are people that I'm actually inviting to an event, a business opportunity meeting, a call, right? In some way, I'm, in some way I've identified them as interested and I'm inviting them to learn more about the business, okay? That's different than a regular connect, which is just to start there, just to start a conversation. And an ad is a new person that I've met or I've put on my list. Maybe they weren't on my list. They're new people I'm adding to my list in Teensy. So those are my goals for the day. Now, you can change these to anything you want just by typing over. They're just a suggestion from the, from the software, right? Anything you want, you can type over. When you click continue, this will set your dashboard up to these goals. Now, you can come back to this page at any time and alter these by clicking edit daily goals at the top of your dashboard, okay? All right, next, finding your why. Next step. I will try not to go off on a crazy tangent here, but I'm very passionate about this part. Finding your why is huge. Now, I know that you guys have heard about this concept, the concept of finding your why, probably from your upline, from, from people in your, in your organization. It's like, it's really important, right? You gotta have your why. But at the same time, a lot of people get stuck on this because it just seems really hard to figure out how to do this. I want you guys to understand it is super essential. I'm gonna teach you how to do it in five minutes. It's gonna be so easy. Cause you already know your why, it's just in here. You need to get it up here, okay? But you need to understand guys, one out of two people in this business quit in the first year. One out of two people quit this business in the first year. That means out of you guys watching, half of you guys are more, more likely to quit than not, right? Which is a total bummer because this industry is awesome. This opportunity is awesome. And the opportunity that you have to help other people through this business is immeasurable. Step one is not quitting. And the reason why some people quit and some people don't is just because everyone will quit without a reason not to. I guarantee you, you're gonna have tough, tough times. You're gonna have tough times, they're gonna happen. You're gonna have challenges, financial challenges, the uh, acts of nature, <laughs> right? We had a lot of those this year. Um, or you just get bored. You're not seeing stuff happening, so you get bored. Or you just, you know, you fall back on the, what you know, the security of your job, whatever it is, you're likely to drift, you're likely to quit, unless you have a really strong reason not to. This is why everyone says you gotta figure out your why. So I'll just take you through the process really quick. We, you know, we kind of condensed all the trainings and personal growth seminars and stuff into a really simple process. We built it into Teamsy because we know how important it is for you to be successful, okay? Let me take you through the process. And I'm just gonna share my story, um, my Beachbody coach story that I had as an example, you know, of course your story would be different, but just to kind of show you how this works. So the first question was, why'd you become a distributor? Why'd you become a distributor, right? And you can ask yourself this right now as we're doing it. I, I found some products I loved and I got great results. The reason I became a distributor was because other people were asking me about them. And I was excited to tell them about it. I was referring people to these products all day long and not getting paid for it. I finally decided with the help of my wife, who kind of sometimes slaps me in the head with common sense, that I should just be a distributor and get paid for it. That's why I signed up, right? Loved the products, was already talking about it, might as well get paid for what I was already doing. What did you hope to accomplish? Second question, I wanted to make $500 a month, extra money, okay? I wanted to make $500 a month, extra money. That was my goal, $500 a month, extra money. And it's not a big lofty goal. I wasn't trying to change the world. I wasn't trying to create game-changing software or anything like that. I just wanted to make $500 extra month. Okay, why is that important to you? Next question. And when you're talking to yourself or when you're talking to your downline with these questions, you've got to dig a little bit because they'll give you something like I did, $500 a month. It doesn't seem that meaningful, but there's a reason for it. In my case, you know, we, um, just to kind of give you guys some backstory where I was coming from at that moment, I told you that I was in the coaching consulting business. Well, my business was primarily coaching real estate agents and mortgage people. And what happened in the great recession of 2008, 2009, you guys remember what happened to those industries? They basically disappeared. And it was in our business. It was, it was just tumultuous, man. It was so scary. We were, our company was losing customers by the hundreds on a daily basis. They just didn't have any money. They couldn't afford to pay us. You're right. Nobody was buying or selling homes. It was just crazy. The mortgage industry was imploding and um, nobody could get a mortgage for like a year. It's crazy. 
And meanwhile, we're laying people off and it's getting really scary. And eventually I was laid off as well. So here I am, middle of this recession. I'm the sole breadwinner for my family, trying to figure out how to, what to do next. And I'm, look, I, I'm, not tr- I'm not trying to cry me a river or anything. I know probably a lot of you guys went through the same thing. I mean, it was kind of like a national thing, right? But it was scary. It was a scary time. Now, by God's good grace, we made it through that period. I found work and we, we made it through. But d- we used our savings to get through and we did not save a penny for years. For years, we didn't save a penny. Even when the industry started picking up again and I was able to go back to my old company and re- get reemployed there and everything, and I was at the top of my career, we still weren't saving money. We were living paycheck to paycheck, which is you know the way most people live. So when I started this business, I was like, wow, if I can make 500 bucks a month, I want to, that's money that I want to make and put in the bank. I just want to save it because I haven't saved money. It was almost seven years. We hadn't saved a penny. So, so I was just thinking this would be a cool thing to do on the side to save money. You with me? All right. Next question. Um, what would achieving this mean for you and your family? That's the fourth question. What would achieving this mean for you and your family? And when I was asked this question, I thought about it for a minute and I thought, wow, if I could save money long enough, we could buy a new house. I really wanted to buy a new house. Anybody, anybody have that as a goal? We had a great house, but it was small and we kept having kids <laughs> and every room in our house. I don't know if you guys can relate to this. I'm sure you can. Every room in our house was filled with people and toys or both. It was like everywhere. Um, and we already had everybody doubled up in rooms. There was just nowhere to go. And we were in a tough situation because where we live, I live in San Diego, our, our mortgage went upside down in the recession. In fact, overnight, we were more than $200,000 underwater on our mortgage. So there was just no, really no way to even imagine getting a new home. But that's what I was hoping. I thought, man, if I could save $500 a month long enough, maybe I could get a new home. So, that's, so this process, guys, of just asking these four questions on, on my why took me from, sure, I guess I'll sign up as a distributor to, wow, I'm visualizing a new home for my family. Pretty cool, right? So the next question is this, why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? Why is that meaningful? How does it make you feel? And so this one took me a little while because honestly, these kind of questions make me really uncomfortable. You guys like that? the personal growth stuff with the, the deep thinking, Ugh. but it's so important to do it, right? So when I thought about this, I thought, well, buying a home is kind of like a materialistic goal. It's really not meaningful. What does it mean? Why do I want this? And as I started really thinking about it, guys, it's so funny because it just kind of hit me. It was something that I knew in my heart, but I hadn't let myself think it. It's like I was protecting myself from the truth. It wasn't that I needed a new house. It's that the whole house represented family. And what I needed was a better family. Not that there was anything wrong with my family, but I was missing it. I was missing my children growing up. I was missing my marriage. All I was doing was working. I would get up in the morning before the sun was up, get ready for work. I was out the door. My kids were still in their pajamas. I'd kiss them goodbye. Come back in the evening after working all day. My kids were already in the bathtub getting ready for bed. That was my relationship with them. And I remember my son at the time who was in kindergarten, he, he, couldn't, he never remembered to call me daddy. He always called me by his teacher's name because that's who he was around more. You know, and I was missing this. I had this amazing family, I was missing it. And saw my wife for an hour a night. It was just nuts. And I realized it wasn't just the house that I wanted. I wanted a new life. I wanted to be able to be part of my family's life. Like, what was I working for? Here I was working in an industry that had already laid me off twice when times got rough. I was at the top of my game, considered one of the best of the best. And here I had to save money in six years. I was completely, totally stuck. And that upside down mortgage, the house was too small. I was just stuck. Anybody relate to that? Then comes this opportunity, network marketing. Oh my gosh. Here's a way out. Here's a way out. In five minutes, I went from, okay, I'll sign up to make a couple extra bucks to, wait a second, this is a way out. I can engineer my life this way. My job is stuck. This is a new avenue. And this is, guys, this is how I created my first why statement. And I'm taking a minute just to go through this with you guys because it's so important. It's so crucial that you guys do this. And it's so crucial that you lead your teams through this, okay? I created my first why statement, and here it is. I'll share it with you real quick. My why. So in this last box where it says my why, you take everything, all the thinking you've just done, and you create a statement. This was mine. To create a life where I never have to worry about money again. 
I enjoy quality time with my family, and I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. This was my why. This was my why. Now, functionally, whatever you write in this box, when you click continue, that saves to your dashboard, okay? So now that why is on my dashboard. I can see it every day before I go to work. Cool, right? I have to tell you guys, something really powerful happened for me when I created that why. Something really powerful happened. Once I created that why, I, was, I had a reason now to really go for it, to really go for it, right? Within three months of writing that down, I left my career. And I focused, I went home and worked from home, building my business with my family. Guys, I already told you the house was too small. I had no place to work. I went to Home Depot and I bought a shed. I put the shed in the backyard in the dirt, no foundation, just two pieces of uh, wood shed on top. I ran an extension cord out, got close enough to the house that I had Wi-Fi, and I, put a, I built a desk out there with scrap lumber. Actually, it was made out of a pallet. Threw my Mac on there and started building my business. I had a reason now. And, and as we built Teamsy, now I had a system to follow. Just creating that why will change everything for you. But even more important than giving you a motivation to really go for it, there's going to be days where you don't feel like doing it. Is that true? I mean, are there days where you just don't feel like doing it? You don't feel like connecting? That why will push you because you have to confront yourself with it. Like, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like doing my Teamsy Connects. Now I got to look at my why and say, I don't feel like being free from worry about money. I don't feel like being present with my family. I don't feel like being healthy and full of energy. No, I, I can't reconcile myself with those statements. I just need to get off my butt and do it. Does that make sense? This is so important, guys. You need a good why. You need to bring it out. Bring it out, right? And get focused on getting this done. It'll be huge for you. You have to have something more important than just extra money or income or whatever to make you stick to this business. It's got to be something deep from your heart, okay? If you struggle with your why, I'm going to give you two more tips. Think about what it is you believe about so much you would never compromise it or are there people or things you would give your life to protect those are going to be the heart of your why if you give your life to protect something or someone what will you give to live for them okay all right you got it i'm passionate about this because i want you to be successful Next step on the setup wizard is getting your contacts imported. Okay, the setup wizard has a few has a few videos here to help you. Basically, we want you to get from your back office. We want you to get your distributors list, right? Your team. Um, if you have a huge team, just get your 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 personally enrolled, personally sponsored people, your first level people. Okay, get all your customers imported into Teamsy, and then all your Facebook friends imported into Teamsy. Okay, those are the three lists you need to start, and then anywhere else you have contacts, you can bring those in too but you wanna get started with those three. Okay, there's some videos here to help you, but there's one more thing that I wanna show you. Here, let me skip this, hold on. Over here on the left side of TNZ is the Help Center, okay? And the Help Center is full of more videos, helpful videos, there's even some webinars and trainings, and then you've got FAQs. So most of your questions are gonna be right here. If you get stuck, just go to Help Center. Also, if you notice here on the bottom of the screen, I don't know if you can see it on my share, there's this little help button, it floats around. See that little help button? You just click that, you can send a message directly to my team and they will pick it up and help you. So if you don't see something here, that's how you get help. Okay, so now we've got everything imported, right? There's one more step to setting up and then we're gonna crush our power hour. By the way, I just want you guys to know, I will do an open Q&A at the end. So if you have questions come up, Put them in the little Q&A. There's a button on the bottom of your review. You can load those up now. I'll answer them all at the end. Okay, so there's one more step for setting up, and that's ranking our customers. Our ranking our, I'm not, sorry, not just our customers, ranking all of our contacts. So let me go to the team page. When you do an import, it will automatically bring you here to the team page, and then over here in this little menu, it's going to have automatically toggled rank mode. So it looks like this. Okay, great. So this is your whole list. So what you're gonna do on this rank mode, and you don't have to do it all together, you can do it as just prospects, customers, distributors, you can break those out too. But you're gonna jam down your list and you're gonna rank people on a scale of five stars. Okay, five stars is awesome, one star is not awesome. You guys know how to do this, you do it all the time. Why is this important? Two reasons. One, philosophically, is that you should spend more time with the best people with relationship marketing. 
The people most likely to help your business are the ones you should invest the most into. That makes sense, right? Okay. And this is based on the concept that if you want to prioritize time, you have to prioritize relationships. You have to prioritize relationships if you ever want to prioritize your time. Otherwise, what happens? The turkeys in your life steal the time. Is that true? They steal it. So this way we can put the best people first. Now, from a functional standpoint, the higher the star ranking, the more often they come up on your list to connect with them. Okay. So let me show you what this means. And the way you do it, guys, you just literally click it. You scroll down the list and you click them. Oh, that's a five. That's a two. Everyone will start, by the way, as a three when you import them. So you don't really have to rank everyone because most of your list will be three stars. Just going to find the people you like the best and, and move them up a little. All right. I'm going to click on this question mark to show you what the tags, I mean, what the stars mean. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or distributor, or they're already on your team and they're a rock star. Okay. Those people, five star people will show up on your up next list every 30 days. Every 30 days, you're going to get a reminder to connect with them. Okay. Just to say, Hey, just to make their day and start a conversation. This is just to keep in touch with them. Okay. And I'm going to explain to you guys later how you invite them and then follow up four star people. These are people that are likely to become a customer or a distributor with a little bit of nurturing, with a little bit of nurturing. Okay. They're going to show up on your list every 60 days, every 60 days. They come up three stars, come up every 90 days. They could go either way. They just, most of your list, like I said, will be three stars. They're just going to come up every 90 days. You're going to get a reminder to connect with them. Two stars are getting colder there every 120 days. Okay. All right. So once you've done the ranking, now we're going to go in and do our power hour. Okay. So here's the dashboard of Teamsy. I'll give you a super fast tour and then we'll crush the power hour together. So right here, kind of in the middle is today's activities. These are the daily goals that you set and set up. So in our case, it was connect with 10 prospects, six customers, four distributors, invite three people, add three people. Okay. As you complete goals, these circles will fill in. You get a little encouragement here as it goes. All right. You with me? Also up here, if somebody's not down here, let me just start with this. Who's up next? This is where we're going to work in a second. This is where we do our power hour. Okay. And if people aren't on this list, you can look them up right up here at the top in the lookup bar. You just look them up. You type in any piece of their name, email address, or phone number, and you can look them up. Okay. All right. If you want to add somebody new after your imports, you click this little icon in the top right to add somebody new. It takes a second to add them in. All right. Um, and then one other, thing, one other thing I'll show you are dailies. These are just little, little accountability check marks, things that you have to be doing to be successful on a daily basis. Okay, great. Now, let's go down to the who's up next now and crush our power. So you'll notice here on the left side of the who's up next are my lists. There's four lists, prospects, customers, distributors, follow-ups. Okay. On the right side is where I log my connect with them. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with prospects. Always start with prospects. And this question just came up in the boot camp where people were asking, should I start with my follow-ups because they're closest to a sale, but always start with your prospects. What happens guys is if you get focused on the people who are ready now only suddenly your pipeline is empty and down the road, you won't have anything happening. So always start with your prospects. Okay. All right. So you'll notice there's only five people on my list. And that's because the up next um, module gives us five at a time. So we can't get overwhelmed and to keep us from skipping down our list. <laughs> we just want you to go the next, just who's up next and connect with them. Guys, I'm going to show you how easy this is to do. We're going to connect on Facebook messenger. Um, you can also use, you can use anything. You can do text message, uh, phone calls in person, whatever you want to connect with people. But Facebook messenger is definitely the easiest and gets, gets a really great response rate. So that's what I tend to use the most. The first person on my list is Jay Lisa Swain. And so I'm going to connect with her. Now, if you're like me, you may not even remember who this is, or you may get stuck on what to say to her. Anybody ever feel that way? Like, what am I going to say? I feel so awkward. Well, remember our goal is just to make her day and start a conversation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to scripts right here in the connect box, right on the bottom, it says scripts. And I'm just going to grab an easy connect script to start a conversation with her. Right? So I'll go to Facebook. And I'm just going to grab, here's connect one. I'll just grab this one. Here's the script. Hi, Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. Simple, simple, works so great. So I'll just copy that script, click copied. Now what I'll do is I'll toggle over to Facebook and I'll just look up Jay. Hold on, let me close some of this stuff. Jay. 
don't ever want to message me during my webinar. Everyone will see your message, right? <laughs> All right, so here's Jay. Now check this out. I'm going to send her a message, okay? And I've already got that, that message copied on my clipboard, so I'm just going to paste it in there and change the name. All right, so now this is ready to send. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it again so that I can just paste it in Teams and not have to type any notes. I just want to be super efficient. So I sent that. That took about five seconds. Toggle back to Teamsy. Now I'm going to paste that in. Okay? There's the message. What kind of activity? It was a Facebook message. Now watch what happens when I log this. Jay's off my list. Now I've got one on my, dash, one on my um, dashboard. Next person on my list is Sue. All right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here. You guys know the drill. I'm going to look her up super fast. There she is. I'm going to send her the same message. Okay. Change the name. Even changing the name, guys, it takes like seconds to do this. Don't call her J Sue. Sounds like J Crew. All right, there it is. Look, there's the message. That message is off to Sue. Boom, sent. Back to Teamsy. I'm going to log it. Facebook message logged. Boom, two. Now I'm just going to go down my list. Could you change the message if you want? Yeah. I usually would just grab one script and use it for all 10. Bam, 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 bam. Unless I see that I've already sent that script, then I might change it up a little bit. Okay? No big deal. There's three or four really easy connect scripts in there that you can use. You can modify them yourself, save them as your own. If you want to change the wording a little bit so it sounds like you, super easy. But don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Just boom. You just want to give them a smile and respond and have a conversation. Now, here's what I want you guys to understand. The response rate on these messages is probably about 50%, which is about 100 times better than email, right? Which is great. So not everyone's going to respond, which is fine. It only takes you two seconds to send it. But everybody is going to go to your Facebook page. Everybody is, in that way, going to get a little closer to you, okay? Which is cool. That's good. Hopefully you're posting on Facebook and you've got a great presence there because they're going to show up on Teams again in a few months. If they didn't respond, they'll come back on your list again later and you'll message them again. Over time, they get warmer. Okay. The people who do respond will have conversations with. So here's how I do my power hour. I just keep going down my prospects list till I've sent all 10 because that was my goal. When that's done, I'll click on customers and I'll start connecting with customers. Okay. Same thing. When I go to scripts under customers, now I'm going to be presented with customer scripts which is pretty awesome, right? Congratulations, you're doing great, right? I hope, how are you enjoying the products that you got? Send me an update, let me know how I can be of help. These are great scripts to stay in touch with customers. Or my favorite one, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. That one is like, that's, this one is gold. If you guys haven't sent this to a customer, send it to a few of your customers tomorrow. <laughs> and you can post the results in our Teams and community because you're gonna get great results from that. It's so important to be in touch with your customers. You guys, this is so huge. And I talk to so many people in this business who are not in, in constant contact with their customers. Three reasons why you need to be in contact with your customers, just really fast. The first one is it's your duty. As a business owner, it's your duty to provide excellent service. You need to be in contact with them, period. Number two, if that didn't do it for you, when you are in regular contact with customers, they will order more products, and they will stay longer on their recurring products, right? So your volume goes up and your retention goes up. Two great things for your business. If you have your team using Teams and staying in touch with their customers, their volume and retention will go up too, which helps everybody, okay? So that's the second reason. The third most important reason to stay in touch with your customers is when you're looking for new business, the hottest source for a new business is a current customer. The hottest source for new business is a current customer. Think about it. People who are using the products and loving them, what do people do when they're using something they love? They talk about it. They talk about it far and wide. Your customers are already creating new business, at least for the company. But if you're not in touch with them, someone else is getting that business. People are looking it up on the website. They're finding somebody else. They're spending the money. They're buying stuff. You're not getting an opportunity to help those people. Stay in touch with your customers. Get introduced to their friends and family that they're talking to. Okay. Uh, and hello, somebody who has, is talking to a bunch of people is a great candidate to become a distributor themselves, right? So you got to be working those customer lists, guys. Don't neglect them. Customer lists are solid, solid gold. Okay. Hold on. I might have a...
Okay, I'm back. I saved you guys that sneeze explosion. Okay, so we've talked to our prospects, we've messaged our customers, now we're gonna message our team, right? So we're gonna message our team the same way. It's all about the relationship. That's why it's called Teamsy. Okay, you gotta stay in touch with your team. Now, if you've got two people on your team, this is really easy, right? But when you've got 100 people, 200 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people on your team, or even more, it gets to be more difficult. That's why you need a system like this, okay? But especially all your personally sponsored direct, direct line people, you should be in contact with regularly, right? And it doesn't take much. Again, you just come in here, there's even scripts for these guys, right? I'm so proud of you, that kind of stuff. Like just send them something. Having a Facebook page, having, doing Zoom calls, that's great, but it's not a relationship. People will stay in the business longer and they will work harder if they feel connected to you, the culture of your team, and the community you build. Okay, so you gotta be in touch with your distributors. So now we've done this, prospects, customers, distributors. We've gone and sent message to everybody. In our case, it was 20 people. There's no way that's gonna take you more than 30 minutes unless you're overthinking your messages. Okay, grab the scripts, use them. Bam, 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 bam. You've sent, you've sent 20 messages in 30 minutes. Okay, now what do we do for the rest of our power hour? Well, we gotta do our follow-ups, right? So let's go to our follow-ups list. Oh wait, there's nobody there. There's nobody on my follow-ups list. How does somebody get moved to my follow-ups list? So let me demonstrate this for you guys, okay? I'm talking to Jay. We messaged Jay, remember? We said, hey Jay, how are you doing? Whatever, I hope you're having a great day. And she messaged, oh, it's great to hear from you. I'm doing great, how about you? We start having a conversation. Now, when I'm having a conversation with Jay, my goal is to ask questions and listen. I'm looking for ways to help. That's it. I'm looking for ways to help. My goal is to help. If I, if, if, if I'm, if I can't help her with the products I sell or with the business opportunity I have, I'm going to look for some other way to help her because I'm going to keep investing in Jay until she either joins my team, becomes a customer or becomes an advocate for my business. Those are my three goals. So I'm going to invest in Jay every time. Every single human being that's on my list in my mind will be one of those three things. Maybe all, maybe all three. You with me? Okay. So I'm looking for ways to help Jay. I'm listening. I'm asking questions. I'm trying to figure out how I can help her. Now, as we're talking, it turns out Jay is really interested in what I'm doing. Right. And so I see an opportunity to talk more about the business. So we start talking about the business and she's intrigued. You know, she's asking me, you know, you're really not working anymore. You're working at home with your family. Yes, I am. That's so cool. I wish I could do that. Well, Jay, I tell you what, you know, my team is having an opportunity call um, event on Facebook t tomorrow. Um, would you like to attend and learn more about it? Oh, that would be great. Awesome. I tell you what, Jay, this is just an example guys of how the conversation turns to an invite. Jay, I tell you what, I'll send you an email with the link um, to the group in a second, and then you can, you can jump in tomorrow, learn, and then I'll connect with you after it and see if you have any questions. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay, so let me, now that I've had this conversation with Jay, let me show you guys how to do it in Teamsy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and look Jay up, because she's not on my dashboard anymore, and that brings me to her record, okay? Now what I'm gonna do in her record is I'm gonna log a connect, but this time it's a special kind of connect, I did it, do you see what I did there? I clicked that little blue connect button that opened up the connect box. Okay, this time I'm gonna click this invite button. See it right here on the bottom left of that connect box? I'm gonna click invite. And in our example, it was an opportunity call, so I'll click that. Okay. And what type of, it was an email that I sent her and I'm just gonna put a note. I could paste the email in there if I wanted to or just write a note, okay. Now, before I log this, and this is going to count now as an invite on my dashboard because I clicked an in, in invite instead of just connect. Now, I have to set a follow-up. This is how she gets moved to my follow-ups list. I click on that follow-up at the bottom middle, and I'm going to set it for tomorrow because didn't I say to follow-up with her tomorrow? So by clicking that, now I set a follow-up, and you can do different increments or a custom date on that, okay? But I'm setting it for tomorrow because that's when I told her I would follow up, and now I'm logging it. So now check this out. There's a follow-up now set on her record. If I go back to my dashboard and I go to my follow-ups, there she is. She's on my follow-ups. Jay's now no longer on my prospects list. She's moved over to my follow-ups list. When I send an invite about the business, I then move them to my follow-ups list. 
And those guys, I'm working differently than everyone else. Everyone else, I'm just connecting and having conversations. My follow-ups are the people I'm following up on. Does that make sense? And that's the fourth list I'm going to work during my, during my power hour. Now, guys, you need to understand right now, and I know you've heard this a million times, that the fortunes and the follow-up. You guys, you guys know that, right? But, guys, you need to understand that 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and the 10th follow-up. Did you know that? 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and the 10th follow-up. So how many of you guys are following up 7 to 10 times on somebody who's been invited to your business? Anyone? And I know there's very few people who follow up like that, but you still need to know that that's where 80% of the sales happen. That's why 5% of the people in the world do all the sales, <laughs> right? And I understand why you don't do that. I mean, I know you, if you're not using Teams yet, you just don't have a system to stay on top of somebody that long. It's really hard to do. I mean, doing it in a notebook or a spreadsheet, that's like pulling an ox cart in the medieval times instead of driving a Ferrari, right? But at the same time, I know that you, you wouldn't want to do it anyways because you feel like you're being a pest, right? And you guys just don't want to be annoying. Is that the case? Okay. Here's the thing. I'm going to teach you in a second how to follow up without being annoying. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to teach you right here. If you do nothing else today, you'll know how to follow up without being annoying. So that's great. But I want you guys to change your mindset on following up. Do you really believe in your product? Do you believe that your product could change a life? Do you believe that your business opportunity could change somebody's life? Are you in it to do that? Are you, are you somebody who really wants to change lives in this? Or are you just trying to make a buck? I just want to know because... If you believe that this opportunity you have can be life-changing and, you, and you're passionate about helping people and changing their lives, let me ask you a question. Do you have a way to change their life if they don't purchase or if they don't sign up on your team? Do you have like a plan B to change their life? No, they need to purchase. And I'm telling you that 80% of sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. Here's what I want you guys to understand. If you want to change lives, you have to follow up seven to 10 times. That's it. Following up then is not an annoying thing, but rather it's an act of love. Following up is an act of love. It's the only thing you have to love people. The only tool that you have to help them change their life is by following up with them. Following up is an act of love. You need to write that down like on a little sticky note, put it in the corner of your computer screen and remind yourself following up is an act of love. On the other hand, if you talk to me about your opportunity and I'm excited and you don't follow up with me, what you're telling me is you don't care enough about me to follow up. You don't care enough about me to follow up. Now, here's the thing. If you follow up three times and give up on somebody, you've given up on them. I will tell you guys, the vast majority of people won't even respond to five follow-ups. The vast majority of people, people who like you, who respect you, and are excited about your product or opportunity will not respond to even five follow-ups. And you guys get all twisted and hurt and mad that people aren't following up. That's just the way human beings are, okay? And I'm not going to go too deep into it today. You just need to know that that is the way we are. The subconscious mind is protecting us from change. When you're talking to somebody and they're excited about uh, the opportunity, consciously, their subconscious mind is going, mm, no, Jay, I don't think so. That sounds pretty scary. Yeah, you hate your job, but it's a job. It's stable. That's safer. We're going to stay there. Okay? So what happens is you follow up. They get your follow-up. And they're like, oh yeah, but I can't do anything with that right now because their subconscious mind gives them an excuse. They don't even know what's happening. They go, I can't respond to Eric right now because the baby just threw up on the dog. I need to handle that. Or I can't do it now because I'm making dinner. I can't do it now for whatever reason. It's just the way the human mind works, guys. You have to follow up enough so their subconscious mind gets so used to you that it stops protesting. That's why it takes seven to 10 follow-ups for people to make a decision to make a purchase. Now, I'm gonna teach you the two principles to do it without being annoying. Are you ready? And here's the cool thing. In Teamsy, we already have 10 follow-up scripts that you can use that follow these two rules. So you don't even have to think about this, but here are the two, the two principles. One, don't ask somebody to do something in your follow-up. That is annoying. Don't ask me to call you back, text you back, message you back, RSVP, join your group, complete my cart purchase. Don't ask me to do anything in your follow-up. I know what you want me to do. We've already talked about it. Your follow-up has no strings attached. It's just a follow-up, okay? The second rule is this, if you don't want to be annoying, is keep your follow-up, send it in written format, like, a, like Facebook Messenger is my favorite, or maybe a text message. 
possibly an email, though people don't read emails. You just got to remember that, right? They don't read them very often. Unless you text them and say, I'm sending you an email right now. It's the only way I get people to read emails. Okay. Your follow-up needs to be written and it needs to be short enough. So don't write a book. It has to be short enough that I can see it right here on the lock screen of my phone without opening the message. Right? I don't want to open the message. I don't want you to know I've seen it. Why? Because I'm not going to respond to you today. Don't you guys do that? But do it that way. Make it easy on them. Don't be annoying. Short and sweet so they can see it on the lock screen. They're not going to respond to the first few anyways. You just want them to see those messages. You want them to have a warm feeling for you for a heartbeat. Keep you top of mind so that you can continue, 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 continue to love them through the process of getting over themselves and helping them make that decision. Now let me show you in Teamsy how amazingly easy this is, you guys. So I've got Jay on my follow-ups list. Now I'm gonna go do a follow-up. I'm gonna to go to my scripts and grab follow-up number one. It's that simple. Follow-up number one, here it is, bam. Just checking in like I promised I would, what questions do you have for me, right? I'll copy that script. I'll go over here, back to Jay. I'll send it to Jay. Jay doesn't mind me sending all these messages because she works for Teamly. Right, I'm gonna send her that follow-up. All right, there it is, the same way, Facebook. Guys, the follow-ups, by the way, take, they take two seconds. So it's, who even cares if, uh, who even cares if they respond? This takes no time. All right, here we go, boom, paste, done. Now, check this out. I'm gonna always set my next follow-up, okay? I gotta set the next one. Otherwise, she falls off my list. I don't want that. I wanna keep her on my list until she converts. So I'm gonna set the next one, boom. So she's on my follow-up list. So when you do your power hour, you're gonna connect with prospects, customers, distributors. Then you're gonna go down your follow-ups list and send everybody whatever follow-up they're on the next follow-up, okay? You're just gonna keep doing that each day. Tomorrow, I'm gonna come back in here again to her. I'm gonna go to scripts. I'll go to Facebook. I'm gonna find follow-up number two, and I'm gonna send it. The next day, follow-up number three. I usually do three days in a row. Then I might wait a day or two to send follow-up number four, okay? Then I'll send follow-up number five. And around follow-up number six is when I expect them to actually respond the first time, usually an apology for not having responded. And they usually tell me how amazing and awesome I am for staying in touch with them in such a great way. Guys, you got to fault seven to 10 times if you want to capture 80% of sales. You have to do it with love. You have to do it with energy and you can't be annoying. Okay. Following up is an act of love. You need to do this. This system will make it so easy for you. Okay. People will thank you for it. And then what's funny is after you followed up with somebody 10 times and they finally join your team and you teach them this, then they understand how well it worked and they'll be great at doing it with people as well, helping other people, helping other people change their lives. All right, so that is how we do it. Now, now let me show you how to finish off Jay. I followed up with her seven, eight, nine times and now she's signed up. She's come on the team as a distributor. Here's how I finish her off in the system. I look her up right here, bring me, brings me to her record again. Now what I'll do is I'll log a sale. And these sale types will differ depending on your network. Let's say distributor kit. I'm gonna log that sale. And now under member type right here, she's a prospect. I'm just gonna move over to distributor and then click personally sponsored. Now I've taken Jay, go ahead and click that. Come on, Benji. there it goes. I've taken Jay as a prop, I took her from a prospect, move her to my follow-ups list. I followed up with her like a pro. Now she's joined my team. I've moved her now over to my distributor list. So I'll continue to connect with Jay in my power hours but she'll be over here under distributors instead of prospects. Okay, so that's how you do it. That's how you take somebody through the whole process, um, you know, in 30 minutes or less with the way I've described it. Now, here's what I want to do with you guys now. If you have questions, put them in the q and I'm going to toggle over right now and start taking those and see what questions that you guys have. Okay. Amanda, Amanda says, can you connect an email other than Gmail? My main email is Hotmail. No, man, the only Gmail works, and that's because the open, open um, API that Gmail has it allows us to connect with them. You can get a free Gmail account, though, and hook it up. It's easy to do. Marge Hicks says, uh, what do you do if you followed up 10 times, they still don't respond or buy? Great question. Great question, Marge. Here's what I would do. I would go to my follow-ups. Wait, where am I? Where's Team Z? Right? First thing you can do is you can go to your full follow-ups list on team, 
that team page, I can go to my full follow-ups list. Okay. I know there's nobody on it, but <laughs> all right, let's put, let's put somebody on my follow-ups list and then I'll show you how to do it. So I've got her, I'm sending her a follow-up for Jay. So what I'm going to do is if Jay, I followed up with Jay 10 times, 10, 11 times, she's just not responding. What I'm going to do then is I'm just going to take her off her follow-up by putting it back to default. Okay. And that puts Jay back into my prospects list. So she'll come up again a little bit down the road. Okay, March. So now I'm going to stay in touch with Jay. By the way, this is a really common occurrence, right? I would have to say that a lot of the people that I signed up on my team were in this situation. They didn't convert right away. They might take six, six months. They might go back into my team's list. I stay in touch and I stay in touch and stay in touch. The most important thing though is that you're in touch with them so they can't fall through the cracks because if you presented the opportunity to somebody and they were interested, they are still hot. Even if they're not going to do it this month, they're still hot. You want to stay in touch with them. You want to continue investing in that relationship. Okay. And when they're ready, you'll be there to get them, help them, help them get started. Tara says, how do you handle Instagram contacts? Can you import them in any way? Okay. So yes, Tara, you can. Um, if you're big, if you're big on Instagram, Instagram doesn't have an export like Facebook. Okay. So it doesn't make it super easy for you to do it. Um, but if you're big on Instagram and it matters to you, you can, there's third party apps. You can Google them. They cost like 10 bucks, 10 to $20 to pull your whole Instagram list out of Instagram. So you can import it. Okay. And it's, if, if you've got a big Instagram following, maybe worth doing what I recommend people do with Instagram, um, is as you meet people on Instagram, add them to Teamsy and, um, and keep them kind of like tag them Instagram. So you can work that as a tag list because some of those people may turn into relationships and some won't. So like if you're, if you have a goal to add a certain amount of people on Instagram every day and you put them into Teamsy and you're trying to connect with those people, the people who you get some response from, maybe you keep them in Teamsy and the ones you don't, you can, you can delete them out. That way you don't have like thousands of kind of useless people in there. Makes sense. Cause a lot of the, a lot of the Instagram, um, interactions don't go deep. The ones that do are the ones you want to keep in Teamsy. Does that make sense? Um, another way you can do it if you've got time and no money and you don't want to buy one of those apps is you can just manually import people into Teamsy as you want to. Okay. From Instagram. Does that make sense? Um, there's a training on how to use tags and I specifically talk about Instagram and people who maybe you meet on Facebook ads or Facebook like pages on that training. It's in the, um, Team Z Help Center. So you guys can check that out. I go into like a full 40 minute training on that topic a little deeper. Okay. Sarah says, can I get a recording of this? Yeah, we recorded it and um, we'll email out the recording tomorrow, but it's also going live on Facebook. So you can already go back and watch the replay immediately on the Team Z Facebook page uh, because as soon as I stop this thing, it'll be up there two minutes later. All right, another question. My websites don't have an export link. I had trouble trying to figure out how to get all my contacts into Excel. Is there help I can get with this? Yes, absolutely. So um, just click, click that little help button on the bottom right-hand corner of Teamsy and say, I need help with this. We can help you with it. Um, we can even do a one-on-one -on -one, like Zoom like this with our team where they will walk you through the screens and help you do it. That's probably what you need to do. So just click on there and say, I'd love some one-on-one -on -one help getting my um, exports out. Make sense, Sarah? Okay. Awesome. Any other questions, guys? Cool. Uh, somebody says, oh, I see some stuff in the chat. Do you have the steps to the power hour written out as a list I can follow until I memorize it? Don't forget. No, just watch this video 10 times. <laughs> All right. Why does the Facebook import only grab their name? Marge asks. Uh, most people don't put personal information on their Facebook profile. However, if they did put um, their email address publicly on Facebook, or if they put their phone number publicly on Facebook, it will grab those and import them, right? I think it's like 5% of Facebook people actually put that stuff publicly. Um, they, so it only can grab from the friends list the public information. Make sense? Okay. All right, cool. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I hope this was really helpful for you. You just need to know... We have tons of training that you can lean into. We're going to help you with this. We're not, this isn't just a software that you use to track. We really want you guys to be successful. 
reach out to us. Make sure if you haven't already done it, join the Teamsy community. Um, get your free trial going. If you're in a free trial now, get your subscription set up now so that you don't miss a beat when your free trial ends. You won't get billed till the free trial's over, but you can get it locked in now, okay? I'll give you guys a couple of challenges. Um, I want you guys to do, um, if you can, find a 30-day success partner and do your free trial with you so you can push each other and encourage each other to get the most out of it. I highly recommend you take a screenshot of your, of your completed dashboard each day and send it to your partner. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable how well that works. And then I'll give you guys a little bit of a, a, a challenge. I call it the five-day challenge. I challenge you guys in five days, five days in a row, like don't skip a day. Five days in a row, use Teams and do a power hour, connect with at least 20 people. That's 100 people in five days. If you do that, just try it. You'll be absolutely blown away by the momentum and the results that you create, the conversations that you have, and it will really encourage you to keep using it. After your 30-day free trial, Teams is $29.99 a month, which is less than the commission that most of you make on one sale. If we can't help you make one additional sale a month, then you shouldn't use us, but we will help you do a lot more than that. So thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Hope that was helpful. Um, welcome to our Teamsy family. God bless. Talk to you soon.